Church and thank you to Joy and Mark for the awesome time of worship. You know, there's nothing better than lifting up the name of Jesus. And we're going to do that right now, church. We're just going to pray for our service this morning. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come together, even though it's virtually coming together. This morning, Lord, we lift up your name on high, Father, in our homes. Lord, we thank you that your name is above every other name. Your name is above sickness this morning. Your name is above any virus today Lord God and Father we pray that your presence would touch every heart every life that is watching this morning God we pray these things in your mighty name amen well welcome to church online my name is Millie if you don't know who I am and I'm just here this morning just to bring us a few notices um, but if it's your first time joining us here at Tauranga Elam Church and um, we've got a little chat box at the bottom of the screen It'd be awesome if you can just comment in that chat box. Let us know where you're watching from today. Is it Ireland? Is it Gizzy? Is it Australia? How about just comment in the chat box? We'd love to connect with you and chat with you today. It's awesome. Well, on to the notices now. So first up, we've got birthdays. A big happy birthday to our pastor, Pastor Trevor, who uh, turned 21 once again, or maybe twice again. No, three times again. Happy birthday, Pastor T. Also to Andrew Richardson, to Jane, and to John Towers. Happy birthday. We will be getting a crunchy or a morrow bar out to you as soon as we can. So hope you've had an awesome birthday. Also, we've had a wedding anniversary in church this week. Congratulations to the Archers, Mike and Leanne, for celebrating 24 years of marriage. Well done, guys. On to the notices now, uh, just a couple there. Uh, if you have a prayer request, we've got a little box at the bottom of the screen. Um, you can click that prayer request box and type in your prayer need and we will have a team that will be able to pray for you, um, pray over that prayer request for your life during this time. So awesome. Uh, also at the end of the service, um, there'll be an opportunity where people can give their lives to Jesus and there'll be a little box or icon that will pop up on the screen and it will say moment just click that um, icon there if you you say the salvation prayer and there'll be a team on the other end of that ready to respond to you so awesome um, lastly before I hand over I just want to thank everybody uh, who has been faithful and giving their tithes over this time you know the shape of the church is looking a little bit different at the moment but the principles of God remain the same so thank you for being principal people um, let's just pray over our giving father we pray for every giver right now in your house father we thank you for their faithfulness we thank you that they've remained steadfast to the principles of God during this time. And Father, I pray that you would bless them abundantly, Lord. You would bless their homes, bless their children, Lord God. Father, we pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Awesome church. Be blessed today. I'm now going to hand it back over to Pastor Trev. Hey, good morning, everyone. Millie, thank you so much for doing that stuff, for doing the notices and uh, birthdays, all that sort of thing. That's brilliant. Hey guys, also, it's really important that we realize that, you know, Millie has just encouraged us that if we want to give our heart to Jesus at the end of the message or maybe rededicate our life to the Lord to take a little box at the bottom of the screen, it's really important that we do our altar calls because I remember years ago, like lots of people don't know what to do. They don't know what to do to, to get saved. And and uh, I remember years ago in Gisborne, there was this guy who'd been coming to church with his wife for, gosh, been coming for like a year and a half, two years. And he went home one day after the service and he said, oh, it's a pity they didn't do that thing today. And she said, what thing? And he said, oh, you know that thing where the pastor would ask, hey, does anybody here want to give their heart to Jesus? He says, you know, because um, I was ready to put my hand up today. But he says, but, but nobody asked. And... Uh, by the grace of God, about 18 months later, the guy actually got saved. But when I heard that story, I remember thinking to myself, guys, as, as much as we can, we want to give an opportunity to somebody to uh, respond to the gospel at the end of our messages. So that's why it's there. It's for the benefit of other people. 
Is that cool? Hey, I want to say also, guys, that we really, well, I miss you. I miss not catching up with you all and having a laugh, having a bit of banter, high fives, all that sort of stuff. And I really am looking forward to the day when we can all be together to do that. Uh, I don't know when that's going to be. That could be quite a bit away, whatever. But, you know, we just want you to know that you're all in our prayers. We pray for you each and every day. And there's prayer going to especially for those people who own businesses and who are struggling financially or finding things really tough with their business being closed down and not operating at the moment. We're praying and, and hoping that the government will, will, will give some favour upon you guys in, in the coming weeks because uh, uh, that's our prayer that you would be able to open again and your business would start to run and, and run well. So we just know, guys, that we're thinking about you. We're praying for you and you're all in our prayers. You know, guys, this is also a time of reset. It's 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 just sitting back and taking stock of some stuff and looking, thinking, hey, do I need to put some new things in place? Do I need to reset or reboot how I do some stuff? And today, I want to speak a little bit about reset. And, and within my message, I want to share my heart with you off. One time in particular when I really had to reset and restart some stuff over again because, um, yeah, I just drifted off the track to, to what God really had for me. So I'm going to share that with you. But I want to say, first of all, two guys, that three of the main meanings of reset is to set back to an initial state, to set a new, in other words, to start afresh, or to adjust again after an initial failure. You know, I look at it sometimes like you watch the guys doing the rugby, the second base game in the world after football, and they, they, they have to have a scrum. And sometimes they're trying to lock in the scrum and the referee calls up, no, no, you got to go back. You've got to reset. It's not right yet. So it's, it's just a reset stuff. And, and in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new things have come. You know, guys, as a Christian, as a believer, that we find in our walk with Jesus that we actually have to reset quite a bit. Lots of times we got to reset and, and, and restart a game and stuff. But you know what? That's cool. Because the great thing about it is it's not a works thing. But it's a grace of God. God's grace enables us to take stock at times and think, whoa, you know, I can't see the forest because of the trees. It's time to slow down a bit, look to see where I'm at and get back on track again. So I want to encourage you, reset is a really good thing. Um, I remember years ago, 1999, um, it was the year that my, my youngest boy, Luke, was born. And um, the thing is, Luke, he was born nine weeks early. And at the same time, just a few weeks before Luke was born, I actually snapped my Achilles tendon playing football. And um, I can remember, guys, I didn't even know it was snapped. I went to church the next day and and, and I tried, I was preaching early in the morning and I remember um, thinking that, oh yeah, and, and I was limping as I was preaching. So I ended up sitting on a chair and I and I preached and I, I wasn't trying to be silly either because to be honest, I didn't feel a lot of pain in it. It was sore and it, and, it, and it was making me limp, but it wasn't a dreadful pain. I thought, hey, maybe if I go to church tomorrow morning, do what I'm meant to do, get some of the guys to pray for me and stuff. And, um, you know, they'll pray for me and, and, and maybe God will heal me. And I was, I was believing for healing. But, you know, I, I didn't get healed. And after the service, a lady said to me, hey, Pastor Trev, um, I think you might need to go to the doctor, she said. She said, because, you know, you might have done quite a bit of damage to your leg. So I thought, well, I got to hear what she's saying. I, I've been prayed for. It still seems the same. So I drove over town. This is an Emmanuel car. And it was the um, it was the right one that I snapped. And uh, I can remember I had to use it lots for the accelerator and stuff. But, but it wasn't bad. Went to the doctor. He said, oh, yeah, you've snapped your Achilles. You've got to go to the hospital. And the thing is, I went to the hospital and they had to reset it as such. They had to push my foot down a bit so that the bit that was snapped off would touch their bit and then they put a plaster on it and guys had that plaster on for just over three months in those days but that was a day before my 40th birthday i say look he was born prematurely man i was busy as heck and to be honest guys i i know you can't work for your salvation but but i love serving the lord and i i, I enjoy being busy 
But what had happened was within all this stuff, guys, you know, I was running kindness ministry. So I was helping to, to, to feed children at school. We would make soup up and we would go and we would serve the kids. We would um, make food parcels up for some of the families who were less fortunate than what we were. And um, just different things. In fact, I was even taking weddings, even with my crutches. In fact, there's going to be a photograph coming up now that's showing you with me on my crutches that I just took on a, wed that, a wedding that day. Um, also, I was really fortunate that my mother-in-law had come over from Ulster, from Northern Ireland. She'd come over and she was able to help me with, with both Caleb and Brody to look after them, which was a real blessing. So it, it wasn't all bad news. But, you know, I'd got so busy, guys, and I was so thinking I got to keep doing this stuff that what actually happened was one day me and this lady were serving the children in an Elgin school in Gisborne. We were serving the soup and I slipped. I started to go one side and my crutch started to fall. I, I almost fell right into the whole pot of soup. That's how bad it was. But listen, guys, in a moment, I want to share with you how I felt God speak to me um, in this time. And But before that, I want you to listen to an absolutely brilliant or watch a brilliant little five minute testimony from Sue Baker, who knew in her heart that she had to reset and it was to do with concerning her health. And I just want you, I want you to watch now and hear Sue's story. Bless you. Hi, guys. Well, I'm glad to be here today and I'm glad you're here with me because I want to take time today to set a milestone in my life and to celebrate that. And you're here to do that with me. This milestone is um, the fact that I'm going to speak for the very first time about my battle with obesity. Um, my entire time on this earth, I have struggled with weight issues. I was a chubby child, which led me to be a chubby teenager, which led me to be a very chubby adult and then a very o overweight, obese. And I've always been obese, classified as obese. I remember the first time hearing that when I was 15 years old. Um, so I'm, I'm, I became an obese adult um, and I was suffering. I was suffering at the hands of of obesity. Obesity is a cruel master, um, but and nonetheless, he is a master. And I needed help to separate myself from him. I remember one Friday morning waking up and feeling the stress of the, the sleepless and troubled night that I had had. And I remember my, my face was wet with tears. My pillow was soaked with tears. My jaw, I must have been crying out in the night, was tired from tension. I had tension in my shoulders. My knees were aching. And I lay back on my pillow and I said, God, have mercy on me. God, have mercy on me. I can't do this. I don't want to get out of this bed. I don't want to be in this life. I don't want to be this person. It's too hard. I'm just a burden on everybody. Everybody has to help me because I'm too fat. I can't do things for myself. I can't even change a light bulb. And I called out to God. Needless to say, God didn't give me a heart attack or whisk me away or anything. In fact, he did the opposite. He got me out of bed and caused me to put one foot in front of the other and to continue on, to journey on. That was a point in time where I know I met with God in a very incredible way. A few, um, a little time later, I went to a woman's meeting and a friend sat down beside me and she said to me, Sis, do you want to lose weight? And I thought to myself, um, right now, I just want to punch you in the face and poke your eyes because why are you talking to me about that in the middle of this meeting? And that in particular. Anyway, that conversation, needless to say, I didn't do that to her, but that conversation was the beginning of a process. And it was, I believe, the point in time where God pushed the reset button on my life. And I headed into a process um, that enabled me to reclaim my life and to, to have a life that was worthy of living and that I was happy to live. A little time after that, a wonderful group of people gathered around me and I connected to an incredible cl clinician and surgeon and the process began and 18 months later having lost 60 plus kgs i know that i am walking a reset life with a new reality in front of me with with a second chance at living in a better way 
with the capacity to do more for God, to love my family, to be with my mokos longer, um, because I have chosen to walk in the process and to be submitted to it and obedient to it. God is continually finding ways that he can reset our lives so that our lives are better, so that we can be better, so that we can be stronger, more able, and to take authority over my life. And I believe I have won that battle where I'm beginning to take authority in my life in new ways. And this is what God wants for me. This is what he designed me to be. This is who he designed me to be. And this is not about KGs for me. It's all about the healing and restoration restoration of my soul, which was very broken. I lived under a cloud of shame, of self-loathing and self-disgust. And bit by bit, layer by layer, God has freed me from that and is continuing to free me. Because it is such a deep brokenness that it needs layers and time and input and intimacy and love and care and support to be successful in it. So I want to encourage you today, the trauma of your life, no matter what it is, the difficulty you face, no matter how big or small, if we just let God reset our lives, push that reset back button, take us back to zero so that he can build us uh, again and make us stronger. I am thankful to God. I am grateful to the people that, that supported me and helped me through this. And I am so thankful that I have more life to live because of it. So thank you for listening to my story today. God bless you and keep you. Wow. What an awesome testimony. What a what a courageous testimony as well. So look, we really appreciate it. That was so helpful and gives lots of other people people hope and stuff as well and um you know it took courage for you to reset and do what you've done and also i realized that you had a goal to lose weight but you actually had to put a plan in place and you actually had to reset and take action to put that plan into practice but what i've realized is that because you did take stock because you did reset that there was actually a, re a reward for it all at the end of it and i mean there was temporary pain for long term gain and so you're a champion i mean we're all so proud of you just for for who you are your heart to love god and love people but you know it's amazing to know that you lost over 60 kgs in weight i mean that's amazing bless you thank you so much for sharing your testimony with us and that's just awesome guys i want to pick up now on uh some some more of my story i i said to you about how I'd become real busy with, um, you know, the kindness ministry, serving in the church, preaching, all the different things happening and look being born early. And to, to cut a long story short, round about, uh, I had bought this ticket. I bought this ticket to go to a conference uh, in Wellington and it was going to be happening in, in August. And uh, I was really so looking forward to going to this conference because I'd heard that there was a guy coming from Argentina and uh, he was sharing great testimonies of God doing miracles in South America and they were seeing thousands of people being saved and man I, I just wanted to be part of that I, I just couldn't wait to sort of go along and so what had happened was that I had um, just got my cast taken off my leg and it was probably about three or four days before the conference was going to start in fact it was three because it was a friday and i remember sitting at home and i'm sitting in the house just having my dinner and debbie sitting over in the sofa and you know in my heart in my heart i just felt god touching me and just tapping me and and all of a sudden this happened really really fast i seen like a vision I seen this vision of me driving the whole way to Wellington, standing from early, early in the morning, waiting for the doors to open for me to go to the conference. I seen me honestly getting home late at night, having to sleep, rushing the next day, etc., etc. And within all that, I just felt really, I just felt in my heart that God was saying, hey, what about me? And I remember thinking, what's all that about? And in my heart, and this was just God speaking to me because the conference was a great conference. Uh, the people who went to it were great people, but I just felt God challenging me and saying, hey, Trev, you know what? The last two, two or three months, you've been so busy doing your stuff and I'm being left to the side. And, you know, I remember looking at my wife. I said, honey, I don't feel I'm meant to go to the conference. I feel that I really need to go and 
have some time with God. And as I said that, I can remember crying because it really, really touched my heart. And what happened was, I phoned this guy called Mike Corbett, who was in the church. He was one of the congregation members, great guy. And his father had a, a little batch down in a place called Mahia, about probably about an hour's drive from Gisborne. So I phoned up Mike and I said, look, Mike, um, I, I don't want to feel pushing things or anything else. We said, look, um, is there any chance that, that your dad would let me go and stay in his batch down in Mahia for a few days? I just feel that I need to get away. And, and old Mickey, he laughed at the start. He said, Trevor, I'll tell you what. He said, if my old man lets you stay in the, in the batch, he said, it's got to be a miracle. He said, but I'll, I'll ring him anyway and I'll ask him. So about 15 minutes later, the phone rang and um, it was Mike. He said to me, he says, Trev, I don't believe it. He said, my old man has said to me, he said, you know what? That's no problem. Tell Trev he can go and stay for the few days or whatever, whatever he wants. So I packed stuff up. And what I would normally do, guys, when I would go away and just have time of my own my God. I would, I, at that time, I would have taken a little like a TV and a video player two in one. I would take coffee. I would take my Bible with me and I would take my guitar. And what I would normally do at that time was I would, I would, it didn't matter about the sleeping thing, you can sleep when you want. So I would just, I'd read my Bible quite a bit. I would watch videos, people preach and all that sort of stuff. And I would get my guitar out and have a time of worship and stuff. And, you know, drink plenty of black coffee. Didn't have any food, just a black coffee because I, it kept me more awake. Because I just, I just wanted, that was me, my way of spending time with God. So. What happened was, I head down to the little batch anyway, and, uh, you know, I'd been, guys, this had been the first time, like, in, like, almost three months that I didn't have crutches where I could walk properly. And I remember I was still limping because, you know, my foot had to free up a bit and stuff, but I can remember, you know, walking and, and just talking with God, you know, and, uh, it was, I was really, really enjoying it and stuff like that. But, but in everything else, I was still feeling a bit dry and I was still feeling, God, where are you? What have you got me here for? And um, I remember opening my Bible and I opened it at 2 Timothy 3.16 and it says in all scripture is God breathed and it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. But you know, I thought, wow, I knew God was speaking to me through his word. So the next thing that happened was I'd just been reading for a while and I'd felt my heart, man, I need to go in and read um Revelation. So I go into Revelations, right? Now, I didn't hear any big audible voice or anything else. And I, I just want to read you this scripture and it'll, it'll come up on the screen for you. And um, it says, and this is the angel, you know, talking, bringing this message to the church in Ephesus. And it's in Revelations 2. And it says, to the angel of the church in Ephesus, right? These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds your hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles, but are not, and have found them to be false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you done at first guys the thing that that really spoke to me from that word was more around first four where he says you have forsaken the love you had at first you have forsaken the love you had at first and then it says in first five consider how far you've fallen repent and do the things you did at first guys you know the word repentance means have a change of mind change how you're thinking and so i started to think about stuff i thought wow you know, I've stopped doing what I did at the first and I started to think about stuff. And what I realized was, you know, a low God was rebuking me. The word rebuke just means stop. It means when you rebuke something, hey, stop doing what you're doing. Put the brakes on, have a think about things. And I thought about stuff. And what I realized was I didn't mean to do this. I guess it probably happens to lots of pastors. You think that, you know, we're serving God that, you, you know, you, you just got to work, work, work all the time. But, you know, God wants us to rest. God rested on the seventh day. It's important to have rest. It's important to enjoy, enjoy life, enjoy your family and stuff. And, and I guess, guys, really what happened to me without realizing it, I get into the habit of go, go, go. 
I had to be doing stuff. I had to be taking weddings. I had to be um, taking funerals. I had to be visiting people in the hospital, making the stew, serving the kids, all that stuff. And that all became, for me, without realising, man, that all became um, more important than me actually spending time with Jesus. And that scripture taught, you have forsaken the love you had at first. Guys, let me tell you a little thing. And this doesn't matter when you do this. I just want to encourage you. Always have time out with God. It might be early in the morning. I am an early morning person. Some people mock that. Oh, brother, you got up at five o'clock and all that stuff. And, and it's try to be funny. No, I don't. But I do get up at six o'clock because it works for me. I go for a walk. I go for a talk with the Lord. Because, guys, I've realized that he's the most important. That if I put him first, everything else falls into place. But what had happened to me was... I was snapping my Achilles because I couldn't walk and I was on crutches. I'd stop spending time in prayer. I'd stop spending time in worship. Now, I'd done these things, but it was only a little bit. It was almost like good, good to be in the morning. Oh, Lord, I love you. Bless you. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. Catch you later. I was gone. And um, I knew that he was calling me back saying, hey, Trev, I love you. I love having fellowship with you. Come on, come back to that place so i can remember thinking wow I, I i need to do that that is so so important and then the the, the next day just to back it up because you know god speaks to us through his word he'll always confirm his will through his word as well and the following day i was i was reading again and and um what i was reading was from luke 10 and I love Luke 10 because it's where the disciples go out and they cast out demons, heal the sick and all that stuff. And, and um, they come back with a great report to the Lord. But God spoke to me in a different way. And, and here's the story. It's um, Luke 10, 38. And it says this, while Jesus and his disciples were traveling, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him as a guest. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his message. You see, guys, it's all about relationship. It's not about religion. It's not about how much we can do. It's about relationship with Jesus. By contrast, Martha was preoccupied with getting everything ready for their meal. So Martha came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to prepare the table all by myself? Tell her to get up and help me. The Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you're worried and distracted by many things. One thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the better part. It won't be taken away from her. Guys, we can so easily get distracted. We can get distracted with our work, with our relationships, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? It's really dangerous. I got distracted with the whole works thing. Don't get me wrong. It's not saying in that scripture that we shouldn't work. What Martha was a great worker. She prepared well. She done things well. And you know, we need to do stuff well. In fact, it talks in Ephesians 2, verse 10, that, that we're um, God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works that were preordained for us before we got saved. So, but you're not saved by works. You're saved by grace, not by works. But you're saved for good works. So it's good to do good works. It's good to help your neighbor. It's good to be generous with love and compassion towards people and help where you can. But let's not do that at the expense of sitting at the feet of Jesus. So when I felt the Lord speaking to me this scripture, I'll never forget this man. I went in the living room and I got to be honest, this was on the third day when he spoke to me. It was the third day where this really happened strong. And uh, I remember I got my guitar out and I just started to pray a song. I knew, man, I need to reset. I need to get back to that place, the initial state that I used to get with Jesus. So, you know, it was a hard thing. I got my guitar out and I started playing this song. And, and it's a song called, I will serve you because you love me. You have given life for me. And it's a beautiful little worship song. So I start singing this song with a guitar. And I've heard this saying in rugby, um, blood, sweat and tears. But I want to tell you something. It was snot, sweat and tears. Because as I'm singing this song, guys, I'm not trying to be super spiritual. As I'm singing this song from my heart, man, I could see how fortunate I was to be forgiven. I could see that Jesus had given life to me. And all of a sudden, I could feel the presence of God. 
in that room. And I'm telling you, I sang and I wept and everything else in the presence of God. But you know what? When I left that place and I headed back to Gisborne, I remember thinking, oh, Lord, I wonder how the conference went, you know, and I felt the heart. In my heart, the Lord said, hey, the conference went great, but I had a great time. I really appreciate what you've done. So, guys, I want to finish with this. It's okay at times to go into the cave. I went into my cave for a few days. The thing is, when we go into the cave, we're not meant to live in the cave. We're not meant to stay there forever. We're, we need to go into the cave at times and let God speak to us. You know, but we need to come out of the cave ready to impact people's lives. And what I want to try to speak on next week is we've all been sort of way in the cave, you know, over this last four weeks, whatever it is. But, you know, what is God doing in our lives? Where is God challenging you to reset? Is God challenging you to reset your time with him and, and not just get all focused on we can lie in until 12 in the afternoon and go to bed at 2 in the morning? You know, hey, when Gideon came out of the cave, he brought deliverance to God's people. So, you know, next week, I hope to speak on that. Want to finish with this, guys. Followers of Jesus, guys, we've been born for such a time as this. I am so looking forward to what lies ahead in these days that are coming. I'm not trying to be rude. I've heard some people make comments about, oh, dear, 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 we're in trouble. I, I, I'm not looking forward to what's ahead. Guys, I want to tell you something. I am. Because I got God on my side. And if I have God, if God before me, who can be against me? God is on our side. It talks in Isaiah, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Guys, God's glory will be seen through us. We can get beside people and help them and cheer them on and encourage them, etc., 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 if we're willing to reset and be open to relationship with God and let him use us for what he has. So guys, in finishing off, just before I hand over to Millie, I want to say this. Um, reset. I, I read this the other day. Um, nothing should go back to normal. Guys, it wasn't normal before. Normal wasn't working. There was a lot of things from before that actually wasn't working. It's been great what's happened over the last few weeks for lots of people, lots of family who've had to get together and maybe had to work through some stuff, but they became closer. They've started to realize that some of the things that they thought worked before and were important, they're no longer important. But I just want to read you this little thing that I've seen on, on the social media. Nothing should go back to normal. Normal wasn't working. If we go back to the way things were, we will have law. We will have lost the lesson. May we rise up and do better. Guys, there's better and brighter days ahead. And I look forward to seeing you next week to talk on part two of Reset and Come Out of the Cave. Millie, over to you. What a great message from Pastor Trevor this morning. You know, you may have been listening to this message and, you know, in your heart right now, you're like agreeing. You're like, yes, Trevor, I hear what you're saying, and that is me. That's me right now. I need to reset my life with Jesus again. I need to reboot my life with him. Well, we've got an opportunity right in this moment where you can do that. I'm just going to say a prayer. And in this prayer, you just need to repeat after me. And right in this moment, God will reset your life. He will give you that fresh start, that clean slate that you've been longing for. Maybe you've never ever invited Jesus into your heart. Well, this prayer is going to enable Jesus to come into your life. Maybe you've walked away from God. You've turned your heart from him. Well, this prayer is going to turn you back to Jesus. So if that's you this morning, you want to reset your life you want to reboot your life again in Jesus pray this prayer after me let's just close our eyes Lord Jesus I come to you afresh today I ask that you would reset my life I confess today that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness and right now Lord Jesus, I invite you 
into my heart. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Congratulations. If you've just said that prayer for the first time, there's a party going on in heaven right now over your life, over your soul. And for those who have turned back to God, congratulations. It's a fresh start. It's a new day for you. If you've just said that prayer today, there's a little icon that's on the screen right now, and it says moment. I just want you to click on that icon. And there's some people waiting at the other end of the computer, ready to connect with you and talk with you about the prayer that you've just prayed this morning. So we want to bless you today, family. Thank you for um, tuning in, church, for watching this morning. And um, be blessed, have a great week, and we'll see you all soon. Amen. I never knew a love like this before